All right, guys. So next we're going to be looking at one of my favorite nodes in Octane here. And if we come down and we, again, I don't know where it's at because I search everything. We come in here and we're going to go composite, composite texture. And this node right here is extremely powerful. Okay, so we're going to watch one of the videos from my Blender Octane 101 guide. It's a full course that I'm basically making to teach you how to use Blender Octane. For those of the members who are in the community, they get immediate access to videos as they're being released because I'm building the course as we go. So if you're interested in that, check the link down below. So this is going to basically allow us to uh, mix, like it's literally going to be compositing textures together. We're going to be able to blend like multiple textures together and on top of that, we'll be able to have blending masking options and then like the layer options that we can use for like Photoshop, you know, with multiply screen, we can put all those together. So let me just stop talking about it and show you guys this. First thing first, what you're going to need is you'll get this texture right here. Make sure you, it's a composite texture. There is also a composite material. It's a different, but this one is the composite texture with the texture output. We plug that into here. Everything turns black. Now this is just going to be the hub. So this is going to allow us to add in our layers. So here it is, layer one, layer two. We can add, I think, uh, I don't know. I think what's the max layers here. I've never gotten that intense, 16 layers. And then if you really need it more layers than that, you can just duplicate this thing again and then plug this into uh, down here. Or no, actually, there's a way to layer these uh, to connect these again. If you wanted like a whole nother, actually, yeah, you would come in here and you would go. I think was it a mix texture node? We would take that, plug that into here, and then you've got your first texture one, and then you've got your texture two. So this is how we can start to mix them. If you really needed to go that deep, sixteen layers is yeah, that's crazy. But I've never gone that deep. Here it is. And of course, let me go ahead and just reset this because we don't need that many layers. This will kind of sit over here and hang out. Again, these uh, up here, I've never messed with these, but these are basically like the the updates. I don't know. So just leave it as stock. If you know what it is, you would you would know where to get into the compatibility mode here. So I'm using the latest version. Here is to add in an input. Here is to remove an input. And here is to clamp your values. So I guess you don't want anything to go over zero, below zero and over one. This will be your clamp values load. If I click on one here, and I'm going to delete two, but click on one. Now what that does is it adds in another node. And then you're like, oh gosh, what is this, right? This is the controller basically this is going to allow us like it says composite texture layer this is where we have our input our opacity our blend modes and check this out look at all these blend modes we have we have like you know your standard mix add multiply darken color burn linear you have a whole bunch and some more that i've never even heard of in my life and look at that i mean this is where I will say this leans, this is way more better than the version that you can do in cycles because you have way more math that you can do, stencils, all kinds of stuff, right? Then we have our overlay mode. You can go source over. Again, it just gets way more complicated and you have way more options, okay? You can do all these other ones here. And then you even have how it's going to affect the alpha operation, normal, blend, back, background, foreground, one to zero, okay? A quick little crash course into this because this literally can be its own section, which eventually will be on how we can make some complex materials. So for the sake of this right now, what I'm going to do is just add in an input and I'm gonna just, for, let's throw in a color RGB and let's say we make it red. Okay, so there it is. We pretty much have our red color. And again, all the roughness and stuff is still being controlled over here. But even if you start getting crazy and you start making complex layers, you can literally start to pipe that texture out and put them into the roughness here too. I have this sitting here. So what I want to do now, this also allows us to, I'm going to add in another input and I'm going to add in another layer. Okay, and on this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to add in an RGB image. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the input. And then I'm just gonna load something in really quick. I brought in just like this Grayscale Gorilla stain map. Okay, I'm using stain 38. Now what this is going to do, let me actually literally just break this off really quick. And I'm gonna show you here one thing. We had it set to red up here. And again, the second layer here kind of like overwrites the next layer. So like how we're not seeing the red anymore because on top, we're stacking this layer on top of that. And if I plug this into opacity, and let's say we take this and do an add or multiply 
or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not seeing any. Let me update the, there we go. Sorry, make sure you update. If you're not seeing things, I tend to do that. I forget that. Make sure you update your viewer. And now what it did is, again, I'm using this as, an, as a mask and I'm piping this into the opacity and then we should set that back to normal. Good. And now you can see what I'm doing here. Boom, there it is. We have this material on top. Now I can also take this if I didn't want to do that. I can also like delete that and just literally go right here and have the red color and then use this as a mask. So now it's masking out everything else and just using this base color. Okay. So this is just scratching the surface of what we can do with this. Let me add in another one. Let me plug this back in here. So now we've got this sitting on top. Now I plugged it into the input and now we're just seeing it over over the top of this so if you wanted to start doing some math now we can start playing with the math we do an add now we can do a multiply you know a burn you kind of get the point right so let's just go back to like uh add here so there it is we're kind of just having that on top there and then better yet i can even take this put this into the output here take this drag this down change this to a different color plug this in and now there it is. You can see what we're really doing. So this is really how, and the continue on, we can add in another input on this one here. We'll add another composite node. And this time we'll bring in a procedural texture. I'll come in here to texture. I'll go to procedural. Let's just bring in a noise texture. Take this noise texture, plug it into the input. And now there is our noise texture. And again, I can play with these values here. Omega gives me more detail. Octaves, again, we'll get into that later on. We got other ones. We got turbulent circular chips, Voronoid, things like that. And you know, you can add in your UV transform and then you can come in here, start to play with your size and things of that sort. But I'm getting a little bit too much ahead of myself. So then again, we can come back in here and do some more math. And there it is. Now we're mixing, kind of like playing with that. And then again, you can kind of just repeat that process taking this, bring this down here, drop this over here. Maybe just change this to something different and they all stack up. Now, if we got our layers here and we can, we can actually reorganize the order by, if I want to take layer number one and move it to the top, I can click on that and you see it moved the socket, click on it again. Now it moved the socket. Now red is back on top. Again, I can bring it down a layer and I can bring it back down to the bottom, vice versa. If I take layer three, I can bring it down a layer, bring it or actually bring it down a layer, layer three, down a layer, it drops. You gotta watch these nodes because they kind of confuse you and then drop down again. And now this layer here is on layer one. So that's pretty much a quick little run through on this. This is the most funnest part of Octane for me is playing with these nodes here, the composite texture, because this is where you can really start to make some really advanced materials just by playing with these nodes here. And again, doing all the math and things like that. So we'll get more advanced in more advanced videos later on how to use this here. So if you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.